Hey YouTube, Alicia here. I am back with a review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season nine, episode 11. So this week we start off with Phaedra and Kenya. It's the week of the camp for the kids. And I thought this was an overnight camp. I remember that Phaedra called it that, but turns out it is a week long camp. So that's fine. So they get to Detroit. They rent a rent a, they rent a car. It's a cute little convertible, and they tease each other about being Thelma and Louise as they roll up to the camp. And the camp is called Camp Copniconic, but it's an existing camp. I really had a different idea what this was all about. I guess I thought that Phaedra was creating a camp or something like that. But I guess there's a real camp that exists, and she's just sending kids to camp. So. So they show us scenes of the camp, and it's a typical camp. Kids outside, there's a lake, and it's a regular cabin, that type of thing. Well, they go to check out the rooms. And we never see Phaedra's room. We saw Kenya's room. It's a regular little camp room, a little, little bed and everything. So Kenya right away is saying, oh, no, I can't do this. Don't rough it. I don't rough it. So I'm with you, Kenya. She says she doesn't want to sleep with a cot. She needs a real bed. So Phaedra says, oh, that's a bed. That's a bed. So Kenya shadily says, now I know you know the difference between a cot and a bed. Throwback to when Phaedra used to visit, <laughs> visit Apollo in prison on that cot, y'all. The old Kenya's still there. So there are two workers of the camp, Shannon and Maggie. They come up and they give them a tour of the camp. They talk about how there's 150 kids. I think Phaedra said she was able to send 150 kids to camp between ages 7 and 17, that they had all the basic necessities. And I was just really wondering, like, wouldn't they have the basic necessities? I don't know. Maybe they don't. But I'm really, really wondering, where did all that money go that they raised last week? Was it for this camp? Or did they really buy anything? I mean, we did see the kids wearing matching shirts, but I'm just curious. I was also wondering, how did they decide which kids went to camp? If any of you guys live in Detroit and heard about this camp, did they advertise it out there? Was there some competition? Did the kids have to write an essay on why they wanted to go? I'm just really wondering, how did they find the kids and how did they decide which kids went? So next we move on to Portia and Todd. And I said before, I thought Todd looked younger than Portia. And this scene kind of solidified that point for me. He not only looks younger, he seems younger. He starts to tell Portia that he had some issues with his job because they didn't like a picture that he posted of her and him on Instagram. It got a lot of traffic and his job did not like the attention that it got. So he had to make a choice between his job and Portia. And he chose Portia. So Portia gets upset and she says that, you know, that just shows he's not stable. It just gives her all these red flags about where they're going in their relationship. And he doesn't really understand that. And I'm just thinking, I didn't even think this was a real thing anyway. I mean, you just wanted him for a baby and you were going to do it all by yourself anyway, right? You weren't really looking for a husband or whatever. So it's almost like you're getting, I'm at least getting mixed messages from this whole exchange. He's trying to defend his position. It's just strange. It just seems really strange. Like if he quit his, why would he quit his job for Portia when it never, never seemed like they had a real anything anyway? It just seems really weird. Like Portia's getting so worked up about this saying she feels insecure now and that she doesn't feel secure with them anymore and not stable. And I was thinking to myself, y'all have been together for five minutes after being apart for 10 years, right? And she was dating somebody else when she was dating him. So how did it get so serious so fast? Is it because she wants to have a baby? That doesn't mean you have a strong enough foundation and it doesn't mean that y'all have to have a relationship. You know, it's just strange. I really wondered if she was just putting on for the cameras or acting or whatever. You guys let me know if y'all think she's sincerely upset or if it's just drama fodder for her storyline. So we go right back to Phaedra and Kenya at the camp. And Kenya ended up staying at the camp. So she roughed it. She toughed it out. Good for her. So Kenya's contribution to the camp is to do character development for the children. Character development. Do you think that's really the role for you, Kenya? But anyway. So she's out there teaching the kids to say, I'm fabulous. No matter what people say about you, if they say you're ugly or whatever it is, you just say, I'm fabulous, and you twirl on them. So they had the shady editors. Well, yet again, some little girl was up there, and she was real quiet. You could see she was a little shy, and she was saying something like, I'm fabulous. They had a little boy in the audience going, did y'all catch that? The shady editors. So we move on to Candy. And Cynthia is really staying in Candy's house, y'all. I, I didn't believe that she was really going to stay there. But sure enough, here she comes. She got her, she has her SUV. She drives up. And she has brought her entire life. She has a suitcase. She just has so much stuff, y'all. I was thinking, really, Cynthia? Is it overnight? Or really, are you thinking about staying for the three weeks when your house is ready, whatever? But anyway, it's too much stuff. Stand, it's, okay, stand. Candy's nice. Candy's, Candy's nice. 
So we come back to the camp, and Phaedra's saying we're on day four of this camp which again, thought it was just overnight. But anyway, it's really touching. They have this um, ses the session or this part of the camp where the kids get to get up and talk about what they've been through, the challenges, the struggles. It was very sad. A lot of the kids have had really hard lives. They were very thankful for being able to go to this camp. They were just happy to be out of the city for a week. I mean, that is amazing to, to know that kids go through so much and that's their reality. So they were very thankful just to get a break for a week. So that was a really nice scene. Phaedra tells us that this time with Kenya has really helped them bond. It's helped them get along a little bit better and that should be working well for their relationship. Phaedra even proposed a truce, y'all. We'll see how long that lasts. So then quickly, we flash back to Candy again with Cynthia. She gets a phone call that her appraisal went through. It looks like it's closer to what uh, Cynthia actually uh, offered the first time. So they get to close. So yay, she will not be a house guest long term in Candy's house. So we go to Bob and Sheree. They are really doing this thing. Do y'all really think they're going to try to get back together again? Because, I mean, Sheree, does she not have anybody else to shoot with? Because she is almost, well, she's with the ladies a lot. But as far as her own personal life, she's really just showing Bob. I mean, she could be showing her kids. I know they're grown now, so they probably have, you know, interesting lives of their own. But pretty much Sheree's sticking to her house and to Bob. So Sheree tells us a story about how she and Bob got kicked out of Spain. They were there and they got into an argument because he was checking out other ladies. He was disrespecting her and she said something about it. He threw his wine in her face, y'all. The disrespect. She said he threw his wine in her face and she just started swinging. And I don't blame her. Like, I just can't even believe that. Like, how disrespectful and rude. And you know that wasn't the first time he did something like that. So that means she probably had accepted that through their relationship and for whatever reason, her own reasons. And so he had the gall to do something so just as tasteful. So they go to some place. I guess it's it looks like a stage, some kind of... Um, I don't know, theater, I guess. And so Bob gets up there and he's doing some kind of cabaret dancing for Sheree. And she thinks it's hilarious. And she tries to tell us she can't think of what first attracted her to Bob. Or she tries to explain what it was. And she can't quite find the words. And then Bob gets done off the stage and they start to eat. And he was telling her he could be really serious and he doesn't have to joke around all the time. She said she's enjoying, you know, spending time with him. And he is as well. And then he starts to tell her, you know, he really appreciates her, that she's a great mother to his kids. He starts to kind of pour out his heart, but it sounds like he's reading something. He's talking super slow, like he's, I mean, like he was reading something. I don't know, did y'all, did y'all see that? Or did y'all think that? It was kind of unnatural. Maybe he's not used to not joking, but it really sounded like it was either rehearsed or he was reading a script. They were in a theater. But Sheree tells us she likes hanging around with, with Big Bob. She likes the fact that they can get along. And she says if she sees some real change, then yeah, she'd give him another shot. Would y'all give him another shot? They've been through a lot. I mean, a lot. A lot of years. So, I don't know. I guess it would really have to be something significant that convinced her he really wasn't just doing this for the cameras or the fame or whatever it is. I'm curious what, what brought about the change in Bob. Like, we haven't really explored that bit, even with Sheree. I mean... The, the um, word on the street is that, and this is just rumors, that, uh, you know, she's doing this because he's paying for her shot to be finished. But then she also has a boyfriend <laughs> somewhere else. So who really knows what's going on? I don't know. Maybe Bob really wants that old thing back. I don't know. What do you guys think? So we go back to Portia, and she's laying in the bed, and she tells us she had a fainting episode. And do y'all remember that? I think it was last summer or a year before that. She was going through these fainting spells, and they didn't know what was wrong. They were speculating she was pregnant. And she says she has a condition where not enough blood goes to her brain, and she'll just faint. But she didn't say if there was a cure or what she could do about that. But I don't know. It seems kind of scary that you could just, like, pass out. Um, she didn't say it was epilepsy or anything like that, but definitely some condition that she has. But we hadn't heard about it in a, in a while. I mean, I remember at one point it seemed like there were episodes back to back, you know, to where we're getting alarmed. But I think it's been a minute since we ever heard about this uh, condition. So I'm really curious to see what's really going on. So Phaedra calls and checks on Portia. And then Todd shows up to check on Portia. And she's kind of cold. She's kind of distant. Not really feeling him. And he's trying to, you know, be nice to her and, you know, keep this relationship going. But she said she feels like he's just really irresponsible. His whole quitting his job has really cooled her off on him. And she's just not really sure about moving forward. She says she's too grown to go through these changes and this stress. She said that's a deal breaker for her. And of course. 
course it is. I mean, for most women, it's a deal breaker if your man doesn't have a job, especially if you're having a baby together. Well, they haven't conceived yet, but that's the goal. So, I mean, I'd be, I'd really be side-eyeing Todd, too. Like, what do you think this is? Like, do you think that I'm going to be the candy to your Todd, which is coincidentally the same name, where I'm going to be the one making all the money and you're going to be home, or maybe a Nene Leak's husband, Greg, where I do everything and you just hang around and take care of the kids? I don't think Porsche is looking for that kind of relationship. So now we're back in Atlanta. Phaedra and Kenya are back in Atlanta. The, part, the, the camp is over. And they're having a lunch with all the ladies to go over how the camp was. And it was a success and everything. So Phaedra thanks everybody. And she brings up going glamping. She said, I really enjoyed this whole outdoor experience. Let's all go glamping. So first they're all, what? What is that? And what do you have in mind? And so she explains, you know, something good and outdoorsy. And so they're all game. They're like, okay, just let us know. Real cool. So Kenya tells us how much fun she had with Kenya, on the, with Phaedra on her trip. And she tells other ladies that she's definitely down with camping and going with them. And she's excited about that. But she brings up a concern. She says, listen, when we go on trips together, sometimes things happen. And she wants to make sure everything's going to be copacetic. So she brings up Portia's anger management class. She wants to know how is that going. She totally busts Phaedra because she says, Phaedra, when you invited me to your mystery room thing, you said that Portia wanted to share with everybody about her anger management. So Portia was like, did I say that? Like, And so Phaedra was like, um just caught out. So you can really tell that Portia is really not wanting to talk about this, especially with with Kenya. They haven't really mended fences. It's something very personal to her. And she's kind of dodging all the questions about what she's doing. Now to Kenya's credit, I mean, she's asking legitimate questions. She's just, and she's calm about it. I don't think she's really needling her. She's just really asking, you know, we just want to know where you are. You had an incident with Jamie at the Christmas party because Kenya said she wants to feel safe. She basically wants to know everything's up and up before she agrees to go on this trip. So Portia, of course, she's suspicious because it's Kenya. And when does she really ever have a sincere bone in her body where she's really asking with good intentions? When? Cynthia tells us in the confessional that Portia has had a number of incidents and the ladies are feeling a little bit uncomfortable. They want, are nervous about the whole situation. So Portia tells us she's feeling completely ambushed by this whole line of questioning. People are being, you know, just curious. And it doesn't seem like they're coming at her or attacking her. Candy wants to know. She has some questions. And she takes real offense to Candy. So basically, Portia, like I said, gets super defensive. It's not going anywhere. Kenya's getting upset. And she's pretty much saying that maybe uh, can't, uh, Portia should address her issues, her own issues that she's taking, that she's perceiving that are coming from Kenya in anger management. So then Candy tries to calm it down and she says, you know what, just ask the question or don't ask the questions. And she says, so are you going to anger management? Let's flat out. So then Portia's like, <coughs> well, anger, anger management is something I'm taking a part of, but it's something I'm doing for me and it's not for you. And she seemed to have directed that at Candy. And Candy obviously received it that way because at first she was kind of looking down and she was like, oh, what? So Candy says to us in the confessional, she doesn't believe that Portia's going to anger management and she doesn't want to talk about it because she doesn't want to have to admit it. And also, Portia doesn't think there's anything wrong with her, which is why she's not seeking help, which is probably all true. So it's clear Portia's not going to anger management because even Cynthia tries and says, is that a bad thing to ask? Should we not ask you about anger management? I mean, it seems sincere. Like, this is Cynthia. So Portia is on her phone. She's deciding that she's not going to answer any more questions. She doesn't like the tone of the conversation. Sheree jumps in to say, look, Portia's always been fine with me. And Portia's really cool with you until you do something to her. She's more of a reactionary person. She's not the aggressor. So Portia's trying to get down to the nitty gritty. She's like, why are you asking these questions, Kenya? Are you saying you don't want me to go on the trip because you're scared of me? And, Fa and Kenya says, listen. None of us are afraid of you because at this point we're sitting on ready. And so now I don't think she said anything that was really that incendiary because Portia was already on nine. And I guess whatever Kenya said pushed her all the way up on 10. So basically Portia's getting turned and Kenya just says, basically your anchor management classes are not working. And so Portia's telling us in her confessional that Kenya deserved what, what happened to her. And that I do agree with that. Kenya did provoke that whole incident, but yeah, Portia should have controlled herself. 
but Kenya did aggravate that situation or escalate it. Then she calls out Cynthia for kicking her when they're on the boat, which again, true, but she brings up candy. Candy, if you say you knock, if you buck, why are you scared? Why is she bringing candy into this? It's just, I don't get it. I guess she's really so mad about the whole block situation and it's coming out this way, but otherwise candy has not been aggressive to Portia or done anything. In my opinion, that was really war that warranted her to lump her into the same category of Kenya and Cynthia. Yeah, so Kenya says, basically what I want to know is, are you on medication? And Portia goes, I'm not on meditation. I was like, really, Portia? Meditation? Okay, I some of my words plenty, but I don't confuse meditation with medication. Maybe she needs to meditate. Maybe she needs to excuse herself from their lunch and meditate and bring it on down. And then she can have a mature adult conversation because she does have an issue. She does fly off the handle. She does get physical really quick. So I don't think any of these questions are out of line. And for her to take offense to it, it's just, it's just proof that she's not doing anything about it. So Portia basically feels like if anybody was truly sincere about their concern over her situation and her recovery, they would have called her. Which, again, y'all are not real friends in real life. And I don't think the line of questioning was really out of order or inappropriate. So it gets turned pretty quick because Portia says that Kenya started asking the questions and everybody piggybacked onto it. And Candy says, look, I didn't piggyback on it. If the topic is being discussed, I'm going to ask some questions. So then that's when Portia really comes at Candy because Candy says, don't call me a piggyback. She's piggyback, piggyback, like she's eight. And Candy's like, well, piggyback your butt up out of here. Everybody else is shocked. Like, oh. So this new Candy we have this season is really not the one. And so Portia has just, I guess Portia has decided Candy must be the weakest link. But she will know when she sees the season, Candy's not the one. So she starts attacking Candy, saying piggyback, 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 like I just said. And so pretty much Candy says, you can get up and you don't have to, you know, talk to me this way. So Portia goes, you can stop cussing at me. And she goes, I can curse at you if I want to, because I was sitting there, you're the one talking to me crazy. So it just gets out of hand. Candy gets up to get some water. She's not really going to, you know, come to blows at this point. Portia gets up and leaves the table. So Portia goes running out. Phaedra goes after her, trying to calm her down. Kenya follows, and Phaedra says, look, Kenya, I don't think you should come. You, you know, you've already done enough, which wasn't that much to get Portia turned. So they all go out to the streets, try to calm Portia down. So Phaedra continuously tells Kenya, don't come, don't come. You don't need to be here. So here's the old Kenya. Well, if anger management's really working, then I should, it shouldn't be a problem for me to be here. Like, she, clearly she's here for the scene at this point. And she probably always was. That's why she asked the questions. But now she knows Portia's already on one. Like 10 on 10 going up to 100. And so Phaedra's trying to avoid a scene. She knows, she knows Portia. But Kenya really wants to egg her on. And Phaedra even tells Kenya, look, you are provoking her. You don't need to come. But, you know, Kenya, she, she doesn't see that she provokes anybody or she doesn't care. So she's insisting on continuing continuing to follow Portia. And Kenya's like, why should I have to leave? And Paige, Portia's like, we are not friends. We're not friends. I don't want to talk to you. So leave me alone. So she leaves. She's walking off. They're still following her through the parking lot. I mean, like, honestly, people, just let her go. You're not going to calm her down. But, you know, the scene. So she even says that. I've never followed anybody out of a restaurant before. And thank, thank so to her credit, she gets gone. Portia drives off. Skid marks. She's out. So once Portia peels off, they all kind of talk about the incident. And Kenya says she doesn't really feel comfortable going on a trip with someone who has issues. So then Sheree says, you do provoke people. And Kenya gets annoyed. You provoke people too. So Sheree says, well, what's going on with you and Matt? He's breaking windows at your house. Obviously, you do provoke a lot of people. So she's even blaming her for that, which I am too, because we've all read Matt's texts. I mean, his Instagram posts and the interviews he's giving. And even on this season, he's been saying how she's hot and cold doing she. Kenya does the most. So we know she's not an innocent bystander in any of this stuff. And she knows she provokes people, but she's there for the check. So she'll continue to do so. So because Sheree mentions Matt, all of a sudden Kenya's like, everybody provokes people. And she says that Sheree has had somebody, some boy, former, former boyfriend jump on her. And she was like, oh, wait a minute, boo-boo. You don't even know me like that. And I'm thinking, where would she get that from? They don't even know each other. Deflection. So it just, it just goes on and on, back and forth, back and forth. Until finally, Phaedra tells Kenya, I mean Phaedra, Sheree tells Kenya she's not on her level. So that causes Kenya to squat down and walk around like a duck and saying, I'm on her level now. Phaedra had texted Portia to come back and talk it out. 
So Portia does come back. The sun is set by now, but she comes back. So hopefully she's more cooled off at this point. They're hoping. So Portia's decided that she doesn't want Phaedra to think that she lumps from the same category of everybody else. So she says she's come back just to talk to Phaedra and that's it. But she's not going to talk to Kenya. She won't sit at the same table as Kenya. So she and Sheree and Phaedra all go back into the restaurant, go upstairs to talk. So Sheree starts talking about how she's offended that, or she thinks it's bad that Kenya is making light of domestic violence. By bringing up an ex-boyfriend that used to beat Sheree and kind of making a joke out of it, she is kind of making light of it. And meanwhile, she's going around town saying she's involved in a domestic violence situation, which I have been saying is fake. Obviously set up and a real slap in the face to real domestic abuse victims. So Phaedra tries to poo-poo it and say, you know, Kenya provokes people. It's just lack of maturity. And Kenya, and Sheree goes, this old lady, well, this old B, I was cracking up. So the Porsche's all calm now, and she calmly asks Phaedra again. She said, you know, it's not the fact that Kenya's asking me the questions. It's not the words she chooses. It's the way she does it. And she says, and by the way, what was she talking about when you said that you told her that I wanted to talk about my anger management issues? And so, of course, Phaedra's just, just sipping on her drink, trying to get her lie together. Phaedra, of course, tries to sugarcoat it or massage the words and says, well, um, she said she was about your violence and I was letting her know you weren't violent. And Portia said, no, she specifically said you told her that I wanted her to be there so I could talk to her about my situation. And she's, and Phaedra says, I did not say that. So, of course, it's a flashback of her saying something along the lines of she wants to explain to everybody about her progress. So she didn't make the implication that uh, Portia was inviting them to share about anger management. And so Portia just clearly says, look, I do not want anything to know. I do not want Kenya to know anything about me. I am not about to share anything with her. And she warns Phaedra, you have a fake friend. You need to be careful. You need to watch your back. And that's the truth. And I think that Phaedra knows too that Kenya is fake. And I don't really think that she's been fooled by this whole week in Detroit. Maybe she's thinking, keep your friends close and your enemies closer because they've had a whole lot of bad blood and they've had to share fights. So maybe she's tired of fighting or maybe she's just trying to stay on the show and she's buddying up to Kenya in a way that she never could buddy up to Ken to uh, Nini until the very, very end when Nini was gone and then came back and made an appearance. But I mean, I think with Phaedra, you can't really too much uh, believe anything that she says or does. There's some kind of agenda at the bottom of it. I don't think she's genuinely friends with Portia. I don't think she's genuinely friends with Kenya. I don't think she's genuinely friends with anybody. I think she did have a genuine friendship with Candy. But look how quickly she torpedoed that. And for what? So Phaedra tells us in her confessional that she doesn't want to get caught in the crossfire. She says Kenya saying something that she didn't say, which she did say a variation of that. And she deliberately said that because she wanted Kenya to go. But she says, basically, if it comes down to it, she's rolling with Portia. So she's already said, sorry, Kenya. So Portia's doing the most. She's going on this whole tangent about she's there. All the ladies are dead to her. She wore all black today and she didn't even know they were going to come at her. Nobody came at her. I mean, if you guys saw that whole thing a different way, let me know. It, it did seem to start out rather innocent and she has had problems and issues. And not all of them, as far as we know, were provoked you know, so I'm just really curious why she's so, I mean, really hot. And she's really mad about Candy. She's like, and Candy, you know, she's over there cussing at me like she just learned how to cuss. And I'm just thinking, she said something, something's brewing with Candy and she's going to find out what it is. I think something's going on with Portia because she kind of came there defensive. I mean, well, she didn't, she didn't walk in defensive. She actually walked in like really cool and hey, you guys, you know, but she got real defensive really quick. And maybe because it was Kenya asking, it made her defensive. Maybe if Cynthia had asked, she wouldn't have gotten so defensive because even though she's not really tight with Cynthia, Cynthia doesn't necessarily have that same spirit about her that Kenya does. So I really think that if another person had asked those questions, it probably wouldn't have went this way. But let me know, guys, in the comments what you think. That was the end of the show for the week. And so, yeah, a lot. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Be sure to comment below. I want to talk about the show with you guys and see what you guys thought. So I'll see you guys in the next review. Bye.